what it's going on. Especially knowing that after God, who do we fear? This life is yours and it's not theirs. But does it mean that life stops? No. Think about the things that drive you. Think about the things that wake you up every single morning. We learn to live around our grief. We don't get over our grief. A tinge, even a speckle, a speckle thing that may have made them go, damn, daddy, damn, mama, and that is a problem. How do I feel about side chicks' roles in people's relationships? I don't feel. So what's stopping you? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is I, just Kathleen. Kathleen. <laughs> um, as always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over and over again. I do appreciate you guys being here. As you know, please always like the video if you've enjoyed it. And also subscribe to the channel if you are looking to see more of my content. I am an introvert and I am based in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I share my life with you guys. And I share a little bit of mental health. And I share a little bit of lifestyle, vlogs, that kind of thing. And it's all on my channel. And if you want Want extra perks and extra little tea uh, there is also a membership space where I share a lot of my personal life and I share a lot of um, things that happen in my life that I do not necessarily share on here bonus content so thank you so much for being here let's get into this video today we are doing what I do a lot on this channel and it's called advice with cat now i'm gonna pull up yeah. i'm not qualified i'm not a qualified psychologist or anything like that i'm just giving my opinion as a big sister to you guys the power should be gone and it's not and i am wondering what it's going on so you guys as always you send through your situations questions anything that you are looking for my opinion on as to how I can advise and we're gonna go through them okay let's get into the first one I'm drinking green tea mm. Banda, I want to start dating but I'm so afraid and I feel like I don't like social media men neither do I <laughs> neither do I I do not like I feel like a partner can have social media accounts. I don't have a problem. Have your TikTok, have your Insta Greasy, have your whatever that makes you happy and that integrates you with the world because social media is social media. But a man who does TikTok videos, I, I, some of them are nice, you know, some of them are giving relationship advice and you can see that, you know, the grown man, you know, the, 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 the man, yeah. But the ones who dance and this and this, nah. For me as a potential candidate to be a, a lover, no, that's, that's. But let me answer your question about you want to start dating, but you're afraid. I think fear is a normal thing, especially when it comes to dating, especially when it comes to maybe you've been hurt before. Maybe you have been in a situation where you love someone so much and you feel like nothing will ever compete with that um, or, or you'll never really feel that kind of connection with anyone. But the thing is, you really won't ever know until you try. This is the thing about dating. There's TikToks that I've seen that have been going around like, you want to meet people? you want to do whatever get off your couch and get out the house and i feel like the same principle needs to be applied to dating because you have to actively put yourself in that space where you say you know what i'm going to try and if you're not ready for it you're not ready and i've had friends who have did just i'm not ready cool you're not ready but when you are ready which it seems like you are um, you just have that fear. It is normal to have a fear when it comes to dating, especially knowing that after God, who do we fear? But, but it's worth a try to just give yourself to it a little bit. And then when you feel like, uh, 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 it's overwhelming. I haven't met the greatest people. I haven't, 
then you take another break. But at least you can actually say you've tried. You can't expect love to come into potential love or potential anything, potential, oh my God, soul defying, gravity defying, soul this, this, there we go, the power now goes. <laughs> um, you can't expect that kind of love to, to happen if you're going to be sitting in the house and not welcoming it into your life. You have to try. You have to try. Um, and there's many ways in which you can. Social media, they are there. They are there. There's dating apps there. If you don't feel comfortable with that, do something else. Go out. Experience life outside of your four walls and outside of your company. The next lady says, I dated a colleague and it didn't go well. Semester starts soon and I'm not ready to be in his space. Unfortunately, with life, we find ourselves in similar spaces or close proximity to people we've had a history with and it didn't quite work out. But does it mean that life stops? No. Does it mean that you quit? No. I think at the end of the day, you, you have to consider that this life is yours and it's not theirs. Yes, you shared a history with this person, but what is more important to you now? And the mere fact that you're saying semester makes me feel like school. You're talking about varsity, right? You're talking about college, varsity, whatever it is. This is important and integral to your growth and your development as a human as someone who wants to transition into working class society and as so are you going to allow yourself to be phased by a relationship that did not work out and let that impact your future and your progression going forward i think those are the questions that you need to ask yourself that it's not about them it's about you and yes you may have been hurt yes there are questions you know yes you're thinking about a lot of things and all of that and you're not ready to be in the same space but it's about you and it's about your growth and your progression so it's really taking it one day at a time you imagine people that work together bro and they break up and they have to come to work together every day. This is what pays your bills. You kind of have to do it. And the same applies to school. So um, I, I would just say, you know, have internal conversations with yourself about it, but also tell yourself that this is about me. This is about my life. This is about my future. And I'm not going to let something that happened then impact me now he says i'm in my early 30s and i feel like i have no direction in my life be it career goals where can i start firstly that is not a bad thing that is not something you should ever feel ashamed of that is not something you should ever feel like yo yo yo, yo all my peers are achieving doing this doing this mean at the same time i've got no freaking idea what i want to do with my life that's fine that's normal there are many people who change the trajectory of their lives, their careers, their love lives, their whatever, as they progress and go through life. So you being in this space is not uncommon, number one. So don't ever feel um, bad about being in the situation that you are in right now. Don't ever feel bad about that. It is normal and it happens. What you can do going forward is what dictates. That's what matters. That is what should dictate your, your movement, right, going forward. So what you can do is find something you're passionate about. Think about the things that drive you. Think about the things that wake you up every single morning, whatever it may be. Some people, uh, you know, their drive is helping out others. Some people, their drive is design. You know, maybe you feel like you're really good with designing clothes. Maybe you feel like you're really good with cooking. Maybe you feel like you're really good, whatever. Use social media. Right now, you might not be sure about where you want to go career goal wise, but I'm pretty sure you might know what your passion is, right? You might have some sort of inkling, some sort of idea as to what you are really truly passionate about. And if you do have an inclination, and if you do have an idea, use social media to your advantage. If you're really good at cooking, if you're really good at baking, do videos, reach out. And, and put yourself out there. Social media is a money-making mansion and you can be part of it as well. 
bring yourself to it just don't sit back and say well i hope maybe one day i'll figure it out but i can't figure it out right now so it's fine maybe i'll figure it out one day no that's not how it works put yourself out there and use social media as the tool to get there people are making a lot of money off of social media while still trying to discover themselves right look at tiktokers look at youtubers look at whatever while they're still trying to figure out their lives People are making money while doing so. So what's stopping you? How do I feel about side chicks roles in people's relationships? I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't take kindly to side chicks. I don't, I have a lot to say about side chicks. I have a lot to say about women or men who feel like, Hey man, this is what I want. This is what, uh, not about particular men or women, but you know, people who, who take that path, I have a lot to say about things like that. That is not pleasant because I don't see how you integrating yourself into a union of two people is ever going to be beneficial for you or the, the two people that are involved. And the sad thing is that one of them doesn't know about it. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I don't. I don't take kindly to that. I have had side chicks uh, uh, walk into my relationships and I've had one who, who had lip with me and tried to play it like she was woke and, oh, it's an agreement that him and I have. Get out of here. No, no, no. You say there's an element of being a side chick that also wants a little bit more. I don't care who says what, I don't care whatever, whatever. For the mere fact that you agree to be this person's side chick, makes way to have a window yard and maybe potentially things could possibly change. Not to you want to be a side chick and leave it at that. I don't see that. I can't reconcile that in my head. So I don't have an opinion on side chicks. I really don't. And, and actually I do, but it's never a good one. It never will be a good one. So I just don't have such conversations, I guess. Mm. I lost my dad in December. I've been crying ever, every day since. Does it um, get better? Yes. Yes. It doesn't get better. Ah, correct me on that one. It doesn't get better, it gets easier. It gets easier, but it takes a lot of time. And December is still very new, very fresh. I was also crying every day, two months after my mother's passing. Um, I would see her in certain rooms in the house. I would um, feel her presence around me. Um, and that would scare me. And uh, so it does get easier. Does it get better? No. I think we learn to live around our grief. We don't get over our grief. We live around it. We create a life around it, which kind of makes it easier every single day as we go on. But I think uh, what you can do is just be a little bit kinder to yourself. It can't be easy. It never is easy. It never will be easy. However, you can dictate that you can control what you are going through, but allow yourself to hurt, allow yourself to grieve. You are in this process of grieving. So allow that to happen. And no one should be ever able to take that away from you or say to you, please, you know, the relationship that you had with your father. And I cannot imagine, uh, losing my dad. I can't, my goodness, touch wood, touch wood. I cannot imagine losing my dad, but I know what it's like to lose a parent. So it's hard, but be kind to yourself. Talk to your dad, talk to him, write him letters, whatever it may be that might make you feel easier. Listen to his favorite music. I used to listen to my mother's favorite music and that truly helped me. It really, really did. So consider things like that as well. Um, I hope that helps. I hope that helps. My guy friend is catching feelings. My goodness. This man used to confide in me. Now he's falling hard. Nditini. Evidently you're not falling and he is, which is sad, 
because I think we all know the experience of unrequited love. You know what I'm saying? That thing hurts, man. Uh, that thing hurts. Uh, but I think it's a conversation you need to have with him. Uh, nothing hurts like caring for someone and caring deeply for them. And they can see that and they just allow you to feel that way. And they, 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 it's, it's, it's in, in a strange way, it's sort of manipulative. Um, I'm not saying you're manipulative, but the, the act in of itself, it's manipulative because you're allowing it to happen and you're just kind of basking in that when you could easily have a conversation with him and just say, you know what? I hear your chat. I hear how you feel. Um, but I'm, I'm not there. I'm, I'm not there. And I think you're a great guy and we're friends and I don't want to, I don't want to breach that. Um, and I know you can make someone else happy, but it's just not where I'm at. But, but also be sure that it's not where you're at. Don't change your mind after three months, eh? Eh? Because that person, you should also know that there's a quite a high possibility or high chance that it might sever the friendship as well when you say that. So that's one you need to uh, uh, tread into very lightly, very, very lightly. Mm -hmm. How can I leave my comfort zone and how can I deal with social anxiety? I've got multiple videos on anxiety uh, from my Motivate and Empower series. So please look for them. Just type in the search bar on YouTube, Just Cut Leo Anxiety. And then something will come up with either my mental health checks or something will come up where I have spoken about it. Please do look there. I am someone who deals with social anxiety a lot as well. Uh, the one thing that I can say is do be kind to yourself. Social anxiety is hard. And I think what a lot of people don't understand about people who have or struggle with social anxiety is that when we're in public spaces, we may seem aloof or we may seem nonchalant or we may come across as if we you know we don't care for those other people when we're actually terrified so other people don't quite get that that i'm actually struggling i can't even speak right now um and it really isn't about you it's more about me so i think dealing with social anxiety uh it's really also good to read up uh read audiobooks or just watch YouTube videos on how to deal with social anxiety. But the first things first, I've got videos on it as well, but be kind to yourself. Social anxiety is normal. There is a lot of people who struggle with it. You're not the only one, but just be a little bit kinder to yourself. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> how do you get over people pleasing or seek approval from people this is hard and i don't think you ever really get over it i don't think you really get over it because i am a people pleaser of note i don't think you ever really get over it i think you learn how to manage it and i think you learn that it's not, it doesn't help you to people please because it comes at the expense of your emotions and how you feel. Because people pleasing has nothing to do with you. It has to do with gratifying that other person. Sometimes you like gratifying that other person because it makes you feel good about yourself. But you can gratify that person if they ask you, for instance, for 500 Rand and you give them 500 Rand, but you have 500 Rand left to your name. So now you've got nothing left. Is that a helpful situation? No. I think it's very important to note that people pleasing doesn't serve you. It serves the other person. And why are you being so unkind to yourself, but practicing kindness on the other person? So I do really think it's something that you should definitely consider and um, think about because it's not helpful in any way, shape or form. It isn't. That's my alarm. Give me a sec. Hey Kat, what's your opinion on a boyfriend that has a lot of female friends? I don't think that's a good thing. Honestly, that's my opinion. It's my opinion. I've been asked for my opinion. I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, for me, it is not comfortable for me personally, knowing that my partner has a lot of female friends. Next thing you hear him saying, oh, I'm going to go visit Palesa, or oh, I'm going to go uh, pass by Chantel, or oh, I'm going to uh, lunch with Maditaba or whatever. 
I will never really feel comfortable with that. Um, because I feel like when you're in a relationship with, with whoever you're in a relationship with, you must be respectful of the fact that they might feel some type of way with you consistently and always spending time with friends of the opposite sex. And I say friends like this because at some point, one or the other may have had a tinge, a tinge, even a speckle, a speckle of something that may have made them go, damn, daddy, damn, mama, and that is a problem. Even when it's a speckle, it's a problem. So, uh, and it could potentially cause a problem. And I think you're giving your partner the highest form of respect when you you can have those friendships or whatever. I'm, I'm just not privy to my partner having female friends. Um, but you can have those, but meeting up with them and doing this and, oh, we're doing this and, oh, we're doing that. I think it's, it's just a little bit disrespectful, slightly, to your partner, especially when you're doing it regularly. Um, because how do you think that makes them feel? Truly, how do you think that makes them feel? Um, hi, Kat. Na kibat la faten set. When is the right time? <laughs> so faten set is basically living with your partner. She just wants to live with her lover. Okay, that's all she wants to do. The right time. Whew, that is a really hard one um, because I think it is entirely different for each and every relationship and different for each and every personality. Um, the reason why I said that, say that is because, hey amen, how there's so many factors to take into consideration. When you live with someone, bills must be paid, monies must be split. Unless you're truly really expecting that person to be paying each and every single bill of that home, uh, that's a little bit unfair. So you all both must be working, money needs to be split, cooking, cleaning. How does your family feel about the fact that you're moving in with someone? Um, how do you feel about it? it? There's so much to take into consideration when it comes to things like that. And it really is a big move. Do I think that it's wise and smart to live with your partner before entering into a commitment like marriage? Absolutely. I am of the school of thought that fata and seta a little bit, fata and seta a little bit if you're looking to push into marriage because you need to see that person how they are, okay? When batong haikata you know, do they wash their underwear or do they just leave it laying strewn there? How do they treat dishes? How do they feel about an untidy kitchen? Because I hate that. I hate an untidy kitchen. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that kind of thing. That kind of thing. So it's important to experience that before marriage. Uh, but when the right time is, is entirely different to each person and each individual and there's a lot of factors to take into consideration more especially factors like family are you working bills to be paid um that kind of thing you know how's your family going to feel about it are they comfortable a family is not going to be comfortable with a 21 year old moving in with their 35 year old boyfriend you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying exactly so think about it think about it okay does a man deserve a second chance if we've had a physical fight and he started it? No. No. My opinion. How you respond to that one is up to you. But my personal opinion, once someone lays their hand on you, they're bound to do it again. And I am never going to sway from that school of thought. When someone looks at you with such rage and such just, uh, they just want to, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? They want to, yes, us. Why, Ibon? Once someone looks at you like that and then pushes themselves to laying the hand the first time around, they're bound to do it again. It's going to happen again. So should you give someone a second chance? Personally, for me, no, I wouldn't. 
I really wouldn't. Um, if you were talking about cheating or whatever, hey man, people different, different, you know, different strokes for different folks, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I, I gave a second chance to someone who's cheated on me before and I'm pita happy. And after that, I realized that I'll never give second chances to cheating ever again. So the, the physical, the physical, no, no. Talk to us about situationships. It looks like, a relationship it smells like one but very no one is claiming let me tell you about situationships it's a no it's a no this person is keeping you around so if both of you are not saying anything about what it's going on what it's going on once on what it's going on between the two of us if both of you are not saying anything you're just using the other until the right one comes along do you understand Catch my vibe. Catch the drift. Okay? If both of you are not claiming one another or having the conversation about let us claim each other, then both of you are waiting for the right person to come along. That person isn't the right person for you. You are just buying your time so that you have access to poon on. Okay, so that you have access to Mudangarang, so that you have access to cuddles and access to lunch dates. I get these are things that couples do, right? Lunch dates, cuddles, vacations, because y'all are on vacations. Maybe you do vacations, whatever that is. Um, vacations, okay? Maybe you guys do vacations and all of that, but you still refuse to claim one another, then that isn't the person for you. That person... It's going to find, stick with me, that person is going to find the right person that they feel is someone that they should be calling girlfriend and they're going to leave this situation. They're going to leave this matasa, tasa, messy, disala, digi, chopped onion, it's a lingmo. Because they feel like, no, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to be. So, no, no. No, situationships on on a thing, bro. They they just nah, 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 nah. It just basically means y'all haven't found the right ones for each other. Um, so y'all are just buying time. You're just enjoying the perks that comes with having access to another person in relationshipy terms. Um, okay. I think I'm going to stop here. I really think I'm going to stop here. Uh, how can one get over being one to being okay? How can one get over wanting to be liked or loved by everyone? People pleasing is a huge problem. And this is people pleasing because there's the, when you want to be liked and loved by everyone, you will people please the heck out of all of that. Uh, how you can get over it is truly, it's, it's not easy, but it, it's not hard either. Um, just remember yourself, my darling. Remember that what you think about a certain situation, how you feel about a certain someone, how you react or relay anything to the outside world, to other people, your engagements with others should matter to you first before it matters to the other person. Why are you not exercising kindness with yourself first? before you worry about pleasing other people. Because the reality about pleasing other people is that you suffer. You get drained from all of that. You just feel like, yo, uh-uh, uh-uh, yo, 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 my God, yo. That's how you end up feeling. And is it helpful for you in any way? Nope, it isn't. It really, really isn't. So consider it in that respect, Hore. Is it actually helpful for you in any way, shape or form? Does it actually do anything for you to people please, but actually drain the life out of you? Is it worth it? I don't think so. It shouldn't be worth it. It really shouldn't. Okay, I'm going to end this one here. If you uh, would like to see a part two of this uh, advice with Kat, and maybe you want me to advise you with something else, definitely throw me a DM. I t typically take them and I put them in a folder for advice with Kat, and then we'll take it from there and I'll do another one. Until then, 
Thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. You guys never disappoint when it comes to choosing me and I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe. Always remember, let us try and get my videos to over a thousand likes because that helps. Branching that number really, really helps, um, especially for the numbers that I'm at right now. Until the next video, Dizohamba, because I have to film a Kenneth with Cat after this. So I'm gonna go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until the next one, I'll see you very, very soon. Sayonara. <laughs>